Okay. So good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, less in three weeks' time, we're gonna be in Warsaw. Um, tonight's meeting is uh, the main focus is the statute. However, given the international situation and the fact that uh, our initiative doesn't happen in a void, uh, just a few words on the um, wall that started officially today, 756 kilometers from Warsaw. Um, uh, I just had, I think it was important to update uh, on the uh, situation and the safety situation for our Congress. Uh, I just had a meeting with the Italian embassy. The meeting was uh, um, scheduled before what happened yesterday for the organization of the Congress, but it was a good opportunity to uh, understand the conditions uh, uh, of what we are doing. And uh, the good news, so so called good news, is that at the moment, of course, the, there is emergency situation and meetings ongoing. The European Council just called for a meeting and the European Parliament as well. <laughs> However, from a very practical perspective, uh, the embassy doesn't foresee any specific risk for the Congress, so they are keeping their ongoing activities and therefore uh, also our Congress is confirmed at the moment, uh, of course, and, uh, and so they don't see any major change from a political perspective, uh, from their perspective, the biggest emergency is going to be the, um, the situation of the refugees from Ukraine to the European Union at the borders. Uh, but uh, of course it's a completely different type of migration and it's in the interest of Poland and the European Union to facilitate the, uh, the access to the, to the European Union, at least according to the embassy. Uh, and from the flying zone of the European Union, which of course has an impact on the flights of the people that are flying to Warsaw, uh, there are not major uh, risks of closing the fly area. Uh, and they don't see the risk of a direct attack of the European Union from Russia, meaning in Poland. Of course, uh, it's an ongoing situation, but at the moment, everything that we are doing is uh, confirmed. And of course, it has also even more political relevance uh, for the democratization process of the European Union for the role of the European Union also with these neighboring countries such as Ukraine. So everything is confirmed and uh, the embassy is completely informed about our Congress and, uh, and so all is good considering the, the circumstances. Uh, if you have any specific question, feel free to write me via email or here in the chat and uh, we can uh, give more details, but I really wanted to start the meeting with this um, information. Um, it might seem a bit uh, uh, isolated, the fact that tonight we're gonna discuss the human statute, but uh, Let's keep doing what we are doing and let's keep our schedule. Uh, so tonight, the purpose of this meeting is to uh, have a preliminary discussion to the fact that the Congress in Warsaw is also officially the first Congress of Humans, where we are going to discuss the evolution of our statute in a more inclusive uh, direction um, as a background information for everyone and also for those who are following the meeting online and we will follow it later. Uh, just a reminder that the first version of the human statute was drafted uh, back in 2019 at the beginning with the three founding members uh, to allow us to operate as a proper association. We are registered in Italy because uh, it was the easiest way, uh, thing to do. Uh, however, one of the goals of our statute uh, and political goal is to be part of the network of organizations that want to have the so-called European Association Statute, which currently is not 
provided by the European Union, but of course our goal and tendency is to become a European association and not an Italian association operating in the European Union. Um, then we had a second update of the statute uh, in September 2020, which is when we opened for the membership and uh, uh, we applied some small changes that allowed that. And now this is going to be the new reform of the statute, which is intended to uh, evaluate how we proceeded in the past years and also to pave the way for, for the future. Um, I will ask maybe Marco and Lorenzo to introduce the approach uh, that we had in the proposal that you have seen. Of course, this meeting is not meant to take decisions because decisions will be taken in Warsaw. Uh, however, it's good to discuss, start to activate our brains uh, in this direction and, uh, and open up the, the discourse for those of you who are here and also for in preparation to what we will present in Warsaw. Uh, talking about the Congress, a couple of updates. So today I had the visit at the venue of the Congress, which is amazing. Uh, and uh, um, in terms of registered participants to the Congress, we have 60 registered participants, uh, 15 of which are Polish. And the majority of the registered are people that are not usually in our meetings, events, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I encourage everyone who is coming to the Congress or those of you who know that someone is coming to the Congress to please register on the website because we need to have a, a track of who is coming and also for COVID safety reasons, etc., to have the full list. Um, the reason why I give this number and the identity somehow of the participants is because uh, what is happening is that the Congress is doing what it was meant to do. So to draw the attention toward the humans, the pan-European project uh, and the idea of a united front of citizens for freedom, democracy and sustainability. But this also means that we need to make sure that in these weeks before the Congress and during the Congress in Warsaw, we have clarity uh, in telling the story of humans, telling the idea of the movement, and also having people feeling part of the constitutive process. So any idea that we have in mind, maybe secondary to what we're discussing tonight, to uh, create a welcoming environment for the people that will be with us in Warsaw uh, and making them feel that they are not only attending a conference on rule of law, democracy, civil rights, etc., but a constitutive moment where they can really be part of humans as members is very important. Uh, from a practical perspective with Leonardo Monaco, we are preparing a flow of email for email that will go to all the people that are registered to the Congress. Uh, where we, in each email, explain a bit of humans and, of course, with the ultimate goal of driving at least a donation to humans and a membership, uh, the, the encouraging the membership opportunity. But uh, what we will do in Warsaw with the people that will be with us is essential for the next evolution of humans. Uh, so I will let uh, maybe Marco to say some, a few words about the relevance of the statute, and then maybe Lorenzo Mineo can explain the proposals that you found on Human Sagora that were developed also together with uh, Roberto Mancuso and uh, Stefano Soggio and Miriam and Angela in a preliminary meeting, just to have something to discuss about. It's not formal decisions, it's proposals. Um, so, thank you. thank you, Virginia, for your introduction and for uh, um, the work that you are doing in Warsaw because uh, it's, uh, it's fundamental for the success of the initiative, the involvement of Polish, uh, of Polish civil society and so on. Um, I just want to add that, of course, uh, um, the actuality of what's going on with the war uh, is uh, covering the importance of any other issue. But uh, we should not uh, uh, renounce, you sh we should not give up uh, the idea of having our own agenda. 
um, even uh, because uh, it's 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 uh, I mean it's it's useless uh, to uh, to react to, to events that are much bigger than uh, than ourselves and what we could uh, be effective in dealing with. Um, I think there is a possible link between the human congress and not really the military crisis in the short run, but the, uh, the perspective of European defense, of uh, military defense and also civil defense and energy policy. Uh, but this is not something that we can uh, improvise in a day. We should study a little bit more. So maybe next week, next Thursday, we will be in a position to discuss this issue further. So about the statue, I, I just give the floor to Lorenzo because, uh, um, well, I think we have to be essential in our modification. Um, we should not build uh, uh, castles in Spain in a very articulated state as if we were already uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, activists and members all around Europe uh, because of course when this will happen uh, we will see the emergence of the need of for a, a statutory solution to better articulate our organization. Now we need to, to, to stay essential. Uh, so let's see what is really needed uh, in our statute as innovation. Uh, we have, of course, to create, um, I would call it a libertarian movement, libertarian in the meaning of the maximum possible of freedom for its members um, without kind of discipline or uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, impose, the imposition of an ideological view. Uh, humans should not become an ideological movement, but a movement that is useful for the people who want to use it as far as they want to use it. So uh, this should be the, the very principle at the basis of the statute. And of course, within this framework, many technical solutions are possible. The, uh, there is this political, very political issue that Virginia raised. We want to become a European organization we don't want to remain an, an Italian uh, organization, but there is not such a European organization so far. So there is a, a first political goal, which is in a way a statutory goal to become a European organization. Uh, this is, uh, so I don't want to get into the article of the statutes and I'm happy to give the floor to Lorenzo about that. Grazie Marco, io andrò in italiano e ringrazio per questo le interpreti trattandosi thank you, anche... Thank you Marco, I will speak in Italian. Uh, thank you uh, interpreters, because uh, yeah, talking about technical issues, I am more comfortable speaking Italian. Before, I would like to say that uh, we should not stop talking about uh, the statute just today because we should uh, have a confrontation uh, proposals, uh, integrations from the proposal that I will uh, introduce today. So my first uh, proposal leaves uh, uh, without any changes, uh, the first uh, articles, they stay the same, the objectives are the same, popular and non-violent initiatives on uh, democracy and sustainability. The membership uh, is still the same, 
you just need to pay the membership fee to become a member of humans, whereas as far as the fourth article is concerned, a proposal of modification concerns the instrument of the president rather than electing one president who will be the one who decides the political initiatives also from a financial and managing point of view. Here, I, I propose two presidents with different genders. This is an idea inspired by other movements, uh, such as uh, the European Greens. I personally think that we could discuss this, we can have different ideas, having um, a, um, two genders with a gender balance is a different signal because a political movement which wants to be representative of the entire society, I think that should include this aspect. I think we we can add the election issue. How will they be elected? Will there be a joint? Uh, will they be joint or not? Then I would like to uh, talk about the administrative, administrative board. The indication I wanted to give is avoiding a real direction, a technical, a technical board. Because we already have the assembly for deciding the political commitments of humans and the presidents. Uh, who will implement it. So we, we need a operational team. And this is the essential team to make a step forward. So a, an operational team with five members nominated by each president. So uh, in total, 10 members. Then there's the assembly of members, the one we will uh, hold uh, every three months. So uh, we put on the statute that it will be held uh, every three months. So uh, during this assembly, we will elect uh, uh, the president. And as I was saying, we should explain uh, better the fact that uh, um, there will not be a competition for this election. I think it should, uh, th there should be a ticket, a joint uh, candidacy. So with a majority vote, the two presidents will be approved. And with a majority vote, we will approve the budget and we will establish the membership fee. With the majority uh, vote, we will vote the election of two presidents. The uh, budget, the membership fee, and uh, the deliberations uh, on human political priorities for the following three months. 
since it will be a, an assembly which will be held every three months. The president, the president will have the same role as before, but we are talking about two presidents now. The administrator will not be um, responsible for financial policy, but he, they will be the technical operator as far as the financial indications of the president will be. So um, the administrator could be elected by the administrative board. And then there's this news, the Sertitian Bay's assembly. There will be a register. So there will be a register open to all. Everyone can be can uh, candidate themselves to participate in the human's assembly. Because citizens uh, will um, candidate themselves and then they will be sorted. We are a political movement, so we will ask um, to adhere to our objectives. So we will have a sortition based assembly with this register. And they will be able to move proposals. Then we will discuss uh, these proposals uh, uh, within uh, the member assembly. There will be proposals on the political uh, issues, political initiatives of humans. And uh, this assembly can be uh, organized by the president or by the assembly, summoned by the president or the assembly. Humans Club will have to think about uh, humans clubs. Do we want a territorial nature? If we do, we could have a minimum of five humans members that can join this humans club with a territorial or thematic nature. with an autonomous statute, but uh, within this autonomy, they will uh, have to have some these points, uh, such as the recognition and adherence to the statute of the human's movement, provision of a president and a treasurer, and uh, drafting and uh, publication of an annual budget. the creation of these humans clubs will be validated by the president. And each humans club can have a blog space on the humans website. Maybe I should clarify the fact that Humans working groups uh, will have a different uh, objective. They will be linked to specific initiatives. They will meet uh, monthly or weekly so that they can uh, prepare proposals uh, to bring before the member assembly and uh, the presidency. So these are the main news uh, of the proposals, whereas uh, the other articles uh, concern uh, other things that were already there. But the last news is about uh, 
becoming a European association as soon as the European Union rules allow. So these are our proposals. I can see that there are some comments on the chat. Thank you, thank you so much for explaining all of this. I would like to point out uh, the council I would like to remind all of you that uh, from the first Council for Participatory Democracy, the um, say called um, Europe was created. And this is the space uh, to have an interactional space uh, for uh, creating proposals. So this doesn't mean that um, we are not talking about a participatory democracy, but to work on this, we need and wide uh, networks. So this will be a mission objective. We will still discuss it, but uh, the sortition-based assembly idea will be more practical. We will elaborate proposals and then humans will interact with other organizations, with other movements to work on our main objectives. I wanted to say this because it is relevant and we have overcome all of this by working all together. So our approach to the statute will be flexible. The statute was flexible and we can still work on it. I think it was really important to point out all of this, to have a framework of these proposals. So now there will be Roberto Mancuso. I'm not going to apologize for speaking in English, but I thank the interpreters and I hope I won't give them a hard time with my Italian structures. I wanted to start with the main news of our new proposal. So having two presidents of different gender. Of course, we need to, we need to specify which genders because the concept of gender is very broad and keeps getting broader. But even if we can see that there are only two genders, male and female, I personally don't share the idea of having a ticket. If I may interrupt you for a second. Saying different genders doesn't mean that there are only two genders. Of course, you don't have to agree. Well, yes, but that's what they said, one female and one male. No, that was a, that was my own mistake. I took inspiration from the statute of the Green Party, and I don't believe they specified that. We maybe should change that. Everything is very flexible. We're not taking decisions. We're not making decisions right now. Let's just uh, jot that down. Uh, sorry for interrupting you. Let's. No, I just wanted to specify that. Okay. So let's say there are eight genders. Why should two be represented and the other six shouldn't? I'd much prefer a single president, regardless of gender. Why? First of all, because the decisions are going to be more effective and more efficient in terms of um, political decisions. Second of all, Despite uh, admiring the female gender, despite loving all gender, I've never really liked the idea of um, having to meet a female quota, especially because we already have one of our founders, who is Virginia, who, can, who shows how, how capable 
she is. I think it's a little ridiculous to specify to to ha must to have a uh, one certain roles that are exclusive to females. I think it's useless. Then I, I've I've gone into more detail on Agora, and you can read it if you want. But I don't see why humans can't have a treasurer, a real treasurer who will be responsible for the financial policy, someone who is not the president. It was um, it was natural while we were just starting out as a movement, but if we want to to grow, then we should have a treasurer. I think a treasurer is a key figure in any movement. So I wouldn't also rule out uh, having an administrator who uh, a treasurer who is responsible for the financial policy of uh, this movement. One last thing, sorry for the long list. I have a, a draft right here. So I've mentioned the two presidents. I really like the idea of the human certition base uh, assembly and the registry. We had talked about it uh, previously. And um, I already I love the proposals when it was first made. And I uh, also, of course, really like the, the proposals of the uh, humans clubs and humans working groups. Reading this draft of the statute and also reading the current draft, I feel as though it's a little cold. It's, it's very cold. It doesn't really have a soul. It's very technical. I understand what Marco said at the beginning of this meeting that we're just starting out and we must be very careful. But I think we should have a, a preamble, a foreword, because yes, we are not an ideological movement. I don't want to be part of an ideological movement, but we should have a, a preamble or a foreword that states the values that our initiative draws from. What how we want to act, what values underlie our actions. I think that could be important because it could drum up more interest and make people want to, to read further and take interest in humans. Thank you, Roberto, Miriam Torrini, and then Marco Cappato. My fear, my hesitancy is about having two presidents, regardless of the, the issue of a gender quota or having two genders. I'm also not the biggest fan of that. But the main issue is having two co-presidents would complicate things. How would that work? Even if they run together for the for the role, they must always agree. They must always find an agreement between them. Otherwise, everything risks coming to a standstill. Because if it's the presidents who need to who need to choose um, the members of the assembly, then they must always agree or at least always find an agreement. And that might work for the first round. But what about the following years? What would happen if these people change? So the male, female, other president, might um, run 
might, might become candidates this year, but we may not have several candidates the following year. So we risk really uh, stopping all activity. And there's another thing. I agree with Roberto in theory about needing a treasurer, but just in theory. If we aim to grow economically and politically, then you do need a treasurer, but just in theory. Because if we have a treasurer right now, then if we have two presidents and a treasurer, we end up having a, a coordinator that has less power than the others. So we would need to fix the balance of power with the coordinator as well. So I don't think we need a, a treasurer right now. Let me just say that we wouldn't have a coordinator anymore. We wouldn't have it at all. Sorry, I had not noticed. So if we don't have a coordinator, then, then that changes things. But as far as roles are considered, that's... These are, this is what I think as, as a member, but it's you who are carrying the movement right now. So I want to hear from, from you, what do you think would be best? If you think it works, then that's fine. I also agree with needing a, an introduction, not just for our values, but because we need to add some feelings to, to, to our statute because it's feelings who move us as humans. Because we are humans, we aren't machines, and it's feelings which move us. And so we need an introduction, but not based on values. Values are, are rigid and don't really allow for an expansion. I think we should focus on what makes us humans, human. And uh, I leave the floor to others without my consideration at the moment. So, Marco Cappato and then Roberto Mancuso. Okay, about these two issues of the preamble and uh, of the co presidency. But the preamble, well, let's think about it. Um, we are still talking about a document about rules. So, uh, values mixing values and rules it is always a risk it is always the risk of getting into a sort of uh, ethical uh, ground um, and even when we talk about feelings as miriam was uh, doing i also think there are some risk in mixing feelings and rules what uh, a preamble could be useful for is, uh, um, and maybe is what Roberto is meaning by values uh, or Miriam by feelings, uh, is um, explaining uh, the nature of the movement. So why the movement is built in such a way? Uh, what is the political uh, meaning of having a movement built in this way, uh, like uh, a preliminary explanation of uh, uh, about why we get to, to this point, why we are doing what we are doing. So th this, in a way, like a declaration of uh, um, of will, in a way, declaration of will, which could be also more it could be warmer than the simple articulation of rules. So, so I get your point. I maybe try to, to do this exercise and proposing to you something. Um, um, about the co-presidency, um, well, the idea of writing down the difference of gender um, even if we don't write it down, I think it would be a nonsense in 2022 to have two males or two women. But 
it, 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 in a way, it is enough to, to discuss this, and then we, are, we will be wiser enough to, uh, to avoid uh, to have uh, uh, a, a co presidency uh, giving the idea of uh, exclusion. So uh, we, can, we can choose inclusion even without putting in the rules in a way, but I think uh, uh, I, I'm interested in understanding what the other people are also thinking about this point. We don't have to choose tonight, so we have time to, to think more. Um, well, the idea of the treasury, I think it would be in a way absorbed in the co-presidency. So um, um, another way of putting it could be uh, within the co-presidency to have one of the two presidents uh, like uh, the legal responsible and uh, the other one to be uh, the person signing the budget. So in a way they would be for those who knows um, the classical articulation of uh, of uh, roles in the transnational radical party, it would be uh, one of the two presidents would be closer to the role of the secretary and the other would be closer to the role of the treasurer. But the co-presidency uh, is in a way to put them explicitly as a ticket, as a two person cooperating one with the other. If they don't cooperate, as Miriam was saying, well, they get back to the Congress, to the Assembly, uh, because they were candidates together. They committed the, themselves uh, to a program and to work together. And of course, in life, uh, it can happen that people committed to stay together, then they are incapable or unwilling to work together, no major problem. I mean, nothing very, uh, there, there will be not, it would not be a big deal. Uh, they get back to the assembly and uh, they will explain why they don't agree. Um, they don't agree anymore in the, what they are doing and the assembly will decide uh, what to do from then on so that the, they will not be forced to go to work together until the end of the world it would be very easy to to stop there but the idea of, of having the co-president working by consensus uh, i i think is um, is a guarantee of, uh, of uh, uh, in a way, of not transforming the political responsibility within an organization as a, a totally personal matter. But you have a first obligation to share with another person and then the two persons to share with the whole organization. So, is, a, is an indication for involvement instead of the indication for personalization. And, and I think that in these two roles, the idea of the treasury could be even formally absorbed in one of the two presidents. Um, and then the administration could even not foreseen in the statute. It would be like really a technical figure or as Lorenzo was saying, uh, one of the person cooperating with the presidency. Uh, both solutions, I think, are viable and would be, uh, would be efficient. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, I also would like to add one bit, which is the fact that uh, when we talk about humans, we talk about achieving goals uh, as a movement and not gaining power. <laughs> and I think having this in mind as the constitutive element of humans, uh, it's a guarantee of the process and the expansion of this 
executive board, I wouldn't call it probably administrative board, but more an executive board or something like that. Uh, it's uh, part of the game, like we are not uh, know, running for election and who becomes the senator or whatever, it's more like how we create a space and uh, the board in itself can become the area of discussion for the two presidents eventually. So I think uh, that part that is very important is uh, very important. Um, Roberto and Sibilla and Gabriele. Grazie Gilda, sarò brevissimo perché sono già intervenuto. I'll be very short because I already spoke, but I just forgot something. Um, I need to go back to what I was saying. When we add changes to statute, we need to be very clear. Um, I'm sorry, I'm hearing voices, but uh, I don't know what's happening. Uh, when we add changes to the statute, uh, those changes need to be justified. The organization needs to be improved. And honestly, I do not see how double presidency would benefit the movement. And secondly, I don't understand why we cannot call the treasurer a treasurer. And the other thing that I wanted to, to say is that the administrative board, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the fact that there has to be an even number of members As I was saying, I think the 10 members are a bit too much, perhaps. Um, needs to be a lower number because they will have to meet quite often in order to discuss things. I think 10 is perhaps a bit too much. Um, rather than have two presidents, I think that we'd rather have A mechanism by which if the president um, has any doubts then they might discuss these ideas but if the board is created in order to uh, give someone the, the the title of administrator of humans a member that then has to fulfill this task uh, well i don't think that we should do this in the meeting and everyone who is following online that there is a thread on human sagora where also all of these can be discussed i'm not saying to roberto i'm just saying to the oh, the participants uh sibilla barbieri and then gabriele luciano Salve. allora il preambolo good evening um i wanted to say something about the preamble the introduction um about this document being to call to Louvre. I don't think that we should uh, dismiss this uh, point because when, when you read this kind of document, people need to be inspired. They need to feel the urgency to act. And so I think that we do share some values like pacifism, uh, the environment, we do care for the environment. So we have some values that are not necessary ideological and we share them but i think that we need people to understand how urgent we think it is to, to take action and as marco was saying he was talking about the will but the will uh, is born out of urgency and why do we need do we feel the need to take action because we, we feel that the, the, the european union is not doing enough and so I think that, that we need to, to make clear why we, we feel the need to act. And secondly, but this is perhaps more personal reason connected to my background, I think that transformation uh, can only be born out of passion and we need to feel this passion. Uh, regarding the double presidency, I think that um, 
uh, as a woman, I have been discriminated against on the workplace. But when we talk about gender quota, I don't feel valued as a woman. I feel dismissed. I think that in, in the environment, in the group that we are in, I do not fear this kind of discrimination, uh, gender-based discrimination. So as far as double presidency is concerned, I, I'm not sure. I think that it's kind of an old concept. Uh, the idea of just having one leader and um, on the other hand, the idea of having two people that need to discuss things first. Uh, maybe it might be a creative, innovative element, the idea of having two people discussing things first uh, because this, this burden can be shared. So the, the resistance that I feel is perhaps connected to the fact that we're used to think in a more hierarchical way. And uh, sorry, I wanted to ask where, uh, if, if a person wants to come to Warsaw, where do they need to register? Landing page of the Congress. There is a register link, but I think you are already registered. I'll, I'll share the link again. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Gabriele, let's stick to the order. Don't be an anarchist, please, that I don't like anarchy. Thanks, so, okay. Gabriele. So uh, I just want to, to say um, a quick, um, I have some question on uh, Humans Club. Um, and then, because I'm, I'm very curious about what could these clubs possibly do and uh, what's the idea behind them? I mean, um, what uh, do we think they would uh, do on the on the um, territory? And um, my my fear um, is that uh, um, spreading the energy of the activists uh, um, from, from a, a, um, an international perspective, pan European perspective, uh, to the local per perspective. Uh, creating a, a new institution uh, could, uh, could uh, split the energy of the activists. So the Humans Club of Rome will be focused more on Rome. Um, and, uh, and this is a problem also for the, um, the objective that you we want to achieve to become a more international um, uh, movement. So, if uh, if we start starting from the, our base, there is mostly Italian. There would be possibly new Italian uh, humans club. So uh, our objective to become more international would be maybe maybe I don't know. I'm just making some question um, more slow because of this. So what's the what are the pros and the cons to to humans club even because to me um as we have seen with the daniele renda case uh, we can uh, um we can uh, treat the local um, arguments the local uh, situations even if we are a one unique movement so just uh, i just want to some interaction on this. Thank you, Gabriele. Um, so the next on stage is Marco. I don't know if Roberto wants to explain the rationale behind the Humans Club. I want to say something that cities are populated by people from different nationalities. So a Humans Club can also be in Rome, but for example, among the goals of a local Humans Club could be looking for European citizens or citizens of anywhere and try to use that as an opportunity for the expansion of the pan-European movement, like how we can be local, but be pan-European. And one of the mission of the Human Scout Club could be to scout the local environment and create the context of pan-Europeization from bottom up. 
uh, just an instinctive reply, but Roberto put the proposal, so I don't know if Dan who wants to get back on the point. Uh, Marco Cappato and... Uh, um, yeah. I share um, Gabriele's doubt on uh, the clubs. Mm. Uh, we could do it as an experiment. Um, I also think that uh, uh, a club can be what Virginia said, but it can also become uh, um, a way of enclosing, of, of limiting the scope of, uh, of humans. Well, it depends on, it's a tool. It depends on how it would be used. So I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it would be dangerous. Uh, we could also try and then uh, and then change it in uh, see what, what the practice would be. So um, so so, but but I think that Gabriele's point is is a, is a good one. Um, the second thing that I wanted to say is to Sibilla uh, is a very important point uh, as a terminological point. I don't think that uh, uh, we should share values. I think we should share goals or methods, but not values. Um, because values is a field, is an ideological field. You share values, but then you, uh, usually what, what it happens with the political parties and movement, and you share values, of course, but then there is a, a fight on methods and goals, and the, the, the statute should uh, should not uh, fall in this trap. Um, Article two, our purpose, the, which is uh, what we ha what we have now, closer to what you are talking about. Uh, is not stating values, but goals and methods. Uh, Pan-European movement of popular and non-violent initiatives, which is a method, right. which has among its objectives the defense of human rights and fundamental freedoms. This is a goal, it is not a value. The affirmation of the rule of law and democracy the protection of the ecosystem and sustainable development. Uh, okay. What does it mean that if I don't, I don't, I don't feel in, uh, the the protection of the ecosystem a value for myself, but I get active to defend it. It's good. I mean, I can join. I can come and sh and and fight together on this goal. If I share the value, but I don't want to do anything to make it concrete, to make it real, what's the point of uh, participating? So uh, it's, I think that uh, maybe it's only a terminological dispute, but I would remain um, at the level of goals more than at the level of values. Um, the other thing is about the co president. Uh, what's the difference in having two presidents with articulated responsibility and having, for example, a secretary and a treasury? The difference is that two presidents are, politically speaking, at the same level and are both representing the organization. The, treasure, the secretary and treasurer scheme, uh, the, the treasurer is subordinated in a way to the secretary. And even in English language, treasurer uh, is uh, perceived more as an administrator than uh, as uh, a political figure. So terminology should help us not create barriers. And if we have two presidents, I think it's clearer that both those figures, they have a, a politically leading role within the organization. So this would be 
in my opinion, a reason to call them that way. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Uh, Lorenzo Mineo, then Roberto Mancuso. Mm -hmm. Let's give ourselves until 7.15. So if uh, anyone else wants to speak, start to write your name down. So. Uh, okay. So. Okay, I'll be quick. Um, no, I agree with Roberto that we would need more explanation about the changing that we want to make. Uh, so Agora is uh, here for this, and uh, I think we, we will uh, elaborate there. And in particular, regarding the co-presidency, because apart from the technical rule, um, there is a philosophy behind this idea. And there is, well, a strong literature on the crisis today of one, uh, one person leadership, but even beyond that, and looking very concre concretely to our case, uh, we know that uh, humans were found by Marco Cappato with his history and this as a meaning and as an appeal for people to be part of humans. If we want to build this pan-European movement, probably uh, we need to, um, to, made, to make a major step than being a, a personal movement. So the idea of um, having a direction of a co-presidency, even for the pan-Europeanization pan of the movement in perspective, I think is very effective. Uh, plus this, the executive board, I, I, the executive board, I, I, I don't was thinking about it uh, as uh, a group making homeworks, um, receiving orders, let's say, from, from the two presidents. The, the fact is we have to run campaign, to build initiatives, uh, and uh, I think 10 person is a good team to be effective on this campaign. Um, when we used to, when we were running Stop Global Warming, for instance, we need we needed to have a, a campaign coordinator and uh, some operational group. And I think I would see it um, like this as an operational team on campaigns and on tasks such as um, you know uh, budget and uh, all that uh, community care, all that. Um, and I don't see it as a political body because we already have uh, the assembly, the certition based assembly and the presidency. Thank you, Lorenzo. Before giving the floor to Roberto, I want to say a few words on the board. Um, having been the coordinator for two years, uh, almost three, um, the other element is that uh, there are a lot of micro elements of moving humans forward, the care of the members, the care of the new activists or uh, people that write and want to know more about humans as things progressed. Uh, and sometimes the coordinator can't do the old, I, I, I can't speak with every single person that wants to join humans, wants to understand better what to do, et cetera, et cetera. There is the administrative element, there is the editorial element. It can be somehow a way to distribute some of the uh, micro tasks, which often are not so micro, that guarantee the evolution of humans. So it can be someone in charge of the fundraising, not in charge in terms but why on that? So I think when the press, the co-presidency identify the members of the board is a way to share the, the drive for certain parts of humans that uh, are needed to make the steps forward. Uh, so at least this is how I see this group of 10 people as a kind of propagator, amplifier, uh, of the human's identity, of the human's needs, of the human's vision, mission, and uh, deployment uh, in the European Union, which is big. Um, and maybe a guarantee also of the pan so having maybe an attention to have not only Italians in the board and, and things like that, uh, to make it more compelling, the whole proposal. Roberto. Grazie Gilla. Allora, Thank you, Gilla. I will start from this very last thing. 
the board has to be able to support the co-presidents. This will not be uh, called, uh, they will not just receive orders. They will support uh, the two presidents with discussions, with, uh, co uh, with brainstorming. Yeah, that's what I said. Maybe I can repeat it in Italian. No, maybe I didn't understand it really well, but... I still don't understand. Is it useful having two presidents? What's why is it useful? There will be conflicts. Why is it useful? Is it useful just to have to show that we have a female and a male? Should just have a presidency. Can we talk a bit more calmly? Yes, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can we please talk a bit more calmly? We have been saying things, you can agree on this, but we have explained it all. So, I think we can be calmer. We shouldn't be that angry. Well, to be honest, I don't really understand why these two presidents are useful. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Can you explain me? Again, I don't see the point in having two presidents. I only see it as a radical chic thing and uh, not very radical. I'm sorry for what I've said before. And the other thing I wanted to say is about the introduction. I really agree uh, with Sibilla and, uh, and Gabriele. I think we should have an introduction, Sibilla and Miriam. I think we should uh, state that we fight for democracy, for sustainability, for our ecosystems, but we should uh, explain per esempio, lo statuto non fa... in why. Why do we use that methodology and not another one? I don't remember the second article, but I think uh, there's not a very precise uh, reference to our methodology. Yes, I can see popular non-violent initiatives. Okay. I take it back, but I think we can write a better introduction with a motivation and why we are doing what we are doing in humans. So I'm done. Thank you. Uh, yes, I just want to know why having two uh, presidents is useful. So I'm staying silent just to see if there is anyone else who want to add anything, considering we are heading toward the end of the meeting. So if someone who didn't speak yet want, or even if you already spoke, but if you want to say something. I'm not uh, in favor of two presidents. I just listened. I am thinking about it. But what I really think is that maybe they can help as a presence, because if you are a president, you have to introduce humans. You will be recognized. Responsibility. politically. So uh, dividing responsibility means uh, having the possibility to be present with a recognizable 
person, then the opportunity to share ideas with another person. I think that uh, by now our movement is very macro-centered. So this uh, way we will open our movement to other people. Well, Sibylla, I think this is really important what you've just said because I've never considered all of this, but I think this will be a very positive consequence of having a co-presidency. Roberto, this means having a, this means sharing responsibilities. This is not right or wrong. It is a other model. Per un partito, diciamo, politico classico, è una necessità rispetto. And so for a party is a necessity rather than other choices. Di quel tipo di decisioni, come diceva Virginia, eh, un movimento di. And the ultimate responsibility. As Virginia was saying, having a popular initiative movement means to support people, activists, groups. So maybe we don't need that singular president in a clearer way a sharing of, una spiegazione. of responsibilities, even with the, the presidency. Illustrazione di un modello, sapendo che non c'è una ragione o un... So we are using a, a, a... There's no right or wrong. We are not... Certo, l'utilità non c'è una We're not una trying utilità. to explain una... whether it is Tra right. Un... Uh, modello usefulness. e quello che il modello può rappresentare This is a model. And what a model can è l'espressione di un modello and, uh, express un'organizzazione uh, just... faccio un esempio astratto dove 10 persone devono essere d'accordo uh, hai espresso you can un modello uh, come dire consensuale di un'unità a different model per esempio in una confederazione l'unanimità eh, esprime la necessità che qualsiasi membro non sia mai messo come dire in minoranza ecco, quindi non è che c'è una utilità o una non utilità necessity is never leaving behind any member it's just an expression of il modello segretario il tesoriere e il modello due co-presidenti, uno con... Them, una... With the secretary and uh, the treasurer or the matter with... Uh, in un modello di co With the responsibility, with the legal responsibility and one uh, with a, a financial responsibility. These are two models. Autonoma di queste due... The co-presidency model explicit... Il movimento. It's the opportunity of these two people to represent the movement. And as iniziare a scollegare come è giusto che sia start la carica al nome detaching the charge to the name and this and this way we will take a step and go il termine utilità to the correct direction by sharing responsibilities. So this is why it can be useful. Not slang. But uh, we should just be calm. Quindi, così come non la uh, we should just express our opinions. We are open to any opinions. We should be respectful. 
we are not saying, okay, we have two presidents, so we are right. Nobody said that we can discuss this in a different way as most people haven't stated the opinion and many people haven't participated in this meeting. So we can wait the others' reactions and then understand what we should do, knowing that in these cases, choosing a model We should choose, in these cases, we should choose a model that the majority likes so we can very calmly understand the sentiment and then we can reach an agreement and we can choose. Knowing that the assembly will vote and there are people who disagree. So there will be the, then, then the assembly will vote. Can I just say something? There's this one sci-fi novel where it takes nine members of the species to reproduce and they were going extinct. Tinder squared. Uh, another consideration on the humans club, sorry, this is my personal conclusion. And I want to so about humans club, I would also so we can conclude the reasoning of a meeting that is very helpful in my opinion. Um, on the humans club, I think I, I get the point of uh, Gabriele on the fluidity of the movement and to not create another layer, but on the other side, I understand what Miriam is saying on the need of a bit of local identity or thematic identity, also to have people feeling more empowered by being part of humans and also for allowing us initiatives. In my opinion, one way to avoid this is to simplify the article on the humans club. So the club shouldn't have their own statute because I think in this way, it's really becoming another entity and we don't need more entities. Uh, and probably also on the budget, the commitment of the clubs could be on bringing new members to humans instead of having an interest in creating their own budget, for example. So I think we can make the club as a form of a self-organized group uh, that also benefit of some functionalities from a technical perspective. So it means that five people that are acting together locally have, for example, their channels on the human's website is also a way to have a bit more uh, strength in uh, telling stories, making uh, political reasoning, sharing uh, initiative and so on. So I would make lighter the element of the club, but I would keep it to ensure a bit of more operational uh, identity and political identity. Again, Humans is a non-electoral movement. In my opinion, maybe something to discuss further is uh, to make sure that is not a non-electoral movement. Uh, and in this way, you again, reduce the risk of the club for being the group in Rome that takes care of the very local issues of Rome. However, as we have seen with the mayors for Stop Global Warming, the local level is quite important for the European level. One of the reasons why we were so much listened by the EU institution with Stop Global Warming was also because we involved the mayors. So I think we don't need to contradict ourselves. Local doesn't mean uh, uh, taking care of, uh, I don't know, the streets. <laughs> uh, there are other organizations that do that and nothing prevents our humans to be active in local initiatives uh, and in humans. But I think making the thing a bit less bureaucratic is a way to create more stronger community, organizing local assemblies. Maybe when we do the meetings, we can go back to something that we did at the beginning of humans, which was the diffused meeting, like to having groups gathering together and joining the meeting together. So 
not to be too far away from the local and not to be too focused on the on the local uh, element. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Okay, on the presidency, uh, let's keep the discussion open. Uh, I also want to remind that being the president of humans, as well as the coordinator of humans, uh, is not necessarily only the uh, honor, but it's also the work behind it, <laughs> and uh, maybe shared work, uh, new functions in the movement like the board are also a way to really make everyone feel more the as i always as i said sometimes the ownership of humans somehow and the accountability toward the uh, the, the movement uh, i'm a woman and i also a lesbian woman so we are double innovative in the european union by the way uh, so far Okay, any other comment uh, and uh, feedback, uh, uh, etc. Okay. So I want to thank the Maria Chiara, Cecilia and Camilla, who are our translator from the University of Forli, uh, who are as part of the internship following us until the Congress, then we will need to find new solutions or new interpreters or uh, uh, new ways to, to keep up the good work. And we might need to add Polish, given the higher participation of Polish in the, in the Congress. Uh, now, joking apart, thanks for the meeting, it was really helpful. And I think also with Lorenzo and whoever of you wants to know, we will try to keep the, um, momentum on the discussion on the statute uh, as uh, our president uh, Marco suggested uh, maybe next week we will we can try based also on the network that I'm building here to have more focus on the Ukraine situation with the different lights that we can shed on that so not only the war but also the democratization process the expansion of the European Union what is Europe and what is not and also we will be able to comment the decisions of the council and the european parliament uh, in the next days uh, i just want to remind all of us that these are essential hours for the success of the humans congress uh, so i encourage everyone to share the link and the possibility to follow the congress both online and offline of course the more people want to come to Warsaw the better it is, but of course, if it was difficult before, now it's even more difficult to convince people to come to Warsaw. But please do your best to ensure that uh, people register for the Congress and uh, attend the online experience. The venue that we have available will allow a good uh, visibility also for the people connected online. Uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, being in Warsaw is emotional and from a sentiment perspective, very intense because we always aim to be in Warsaw for the Congress. So the fact that is really happening, it's um, quite a experience. So I hope all of you can be with us and uh, uh, ensure that as many people as possible from different parts of the European Union can be here. In three weeks time, 60 registered participants, we can at least double with the online experience at least. Thank you very much and see you next Thursday. Uh, I don't know if Lorenzo, we can confirm the meeting in Italian on Cittadine per il Clima on Tuesday or not. I don't see Lorenzo anymore. Yes, yes, I would like to confirm. Okay, so confirm the meeting on Monday and also quick mention the Congress on, on Tuesday. On Tuesday, Tuesday, sorry. Yeah. And uh, on a little note, I remind us that on the day after the Congress, the 13th of March, we will hold in Warsaw the demonstration for the European Citizen Assembly in front of the European Union. Lorenzo is organizing this in uh, Italy, also in collaboration with the Politici per Caso and Cittadini per il Clima Initiative. If you are not coming to Warsaw, both uh, if you are here or if you are listening online, the idea is to try and have similar demonstrations also in other cities uh, as the European Citizen Assembly as an instrument for increasing the 
level of democracy in the European Union, but also the ways how the European Union can achieve uh, meaningful reforms. I see that Andreas is connected with us, so uh, I hope you are still willing to come to Warsaw, but I don't know if some of your um, team of Vienna goes Europe are staying in Vienna. Uh, I don't know if you want to consider maybe to try and have a little uh, city you know, something for the European Citizen Assemblies on the 13th uh, in Vienna as well. Uh, let's be in touch, uh, you have all the contact. It's uh, Thursday night. And uh, that's it, ciao.